this book here, uh, Discovery of Ancient America. All right, so it says, uh, the Hebrew New World comparison is not without supporting evidence. So as you can see, okay. it is not more mere speculation. Many facts exist that lie to tie the two peoples together. I mean, look at Tor Kamada, who was in the 1600s, head of the Franciscan station at Zacaton, and spoke with the Indians of his day. When you look at Prescott and the writings of William Prescott and others who have expended much effort to dispel or explain away these facts. Of the three major cultures here on the North American continent, prior to the rediscovery of Azatlan by Christopher Columbus, that is Toteca, May Mayateca, and Azteca, within the names of the tribes themselves, one may find a Hebrew meaning for all three. A meaning which appropriate for the tribe as well. For example, when we look here at the Toltec, Tolteca, and you look at the prehistoric mound building culture of America, and we see here, it relates the toll or tail to a mound, Hebrew number 8510. And when we look at Taka, to camp people, this is Hebrew number 8497. So when we look at Tolteca in ancient America and the prehistoric culture in regards to uh, the pre diluvian period of the flood, when we look at the symbolism of family structure and the First Nations. When we look at the First Nations, the Table of Nations, which we find in Genesis, the 10th chapter, we can correlate that to First Nations. We understand Genesis, the beginnings. And when we look at the beginnings of America and its prehistory, its pre-Diluvian history, we find mounds and the agriculture and development of the three sisters, corn, squash, and beans. And how this method uh, created the abundance and the fertility around corn and maize and the ideology around fertility and the grow medicine. So when we look at the term medicine man as a reason why it relates to natives of America. So when we look here at the term in the Hebrew language, toll, the, the mound and the Toltecan people, the mound people, this is where we're talking about the prehistoric beginnings of this mound building culture. When we look at Maya, three, nine, six, seven in the Hebrew, right? And we're talking about the people, the abundance. And so it says here, all right, let's get this out. Let's bring this out. It says the name, the very name for Mexico, Mexica, when you look at the Messiah, the anointing, this is why we find Ikua and the merchant gods and the anointing or the, the, the rubbing of the black soot to show the anointing of one. When we understand the darkness and the jaguar priesthood going into the darkness. When we look at Meshi, Meshika, and the word for the future king, the crown prince, understand the corona. The crowns, when we look at the crown prince, the cloud, and all of this relation with the fertility rights in dealing with the flood, the waters, and the actual people, Maya, Mayam. We understand the waters, Mayam, but when we look at the, the crown prince, the Messiae, and the Messiae oil, the anointing of the crocodile oil, and all of those things, and we look here at the name for Mexico, which goes back to the Hebrew connection, showing the anointed one. And when we look at this anointed one, it is dedicated, a dedicated scholar must ponder these coincidences. Have we incorrectly identified the Totecas as Hebrew? If so, why are there so many historic and linguistic elements, alignments? Are they merely a series of outstanding coincidences? Since they are there, perhaps these questions can answer in some other satisfactory manner. So when we see here, uh, Azatlan, all right, and we're talking about the prehistoric beginnings of America, the, the primitive, what they call primitive. When we look at these ancient primitive 
agriculturing and pottery making and tools and instruments, these things relate to the prehistoric times. When we look at the sons of Cain in Genesis, the fourth chapter, and we see the vast history of America and its ancient lands. Peace.